the Spaniards, Blood pursued, are not quite the fools you are supposing them. Let me tell you, messieurs, that two years ago I made a survey of Cartagena as a preliminary to raiding it. I came hither with some friendly trading Indians, myself disguised as an Indian, and in that guise I spent a week in the city and studied carefully all its approaches. On the side of the sea, where it looks so temptingly open to assault, there is shoal water for over half a mile out, far enough out, I assure you, to ensure that no ship shall come within bombarding range of it. It is not safe to venture nearer land than three quarters of a mile. But our landing will be effected in canoes and paraguas and open boats, cried an officer impatiently. In the calmest season of the year, the surf will hinder any such operation, and you will also bear in mind that if landing were possible as you are suggesting, that landing could not be covered by the ship's guns. In fact, it is the landing parties would be in danger from their own artillery. If the attack is made by night, as I propose, covering will be unnecessary. You should be ashore in force before the Spaniards are aware of the intent. You are assuming that Cartagena is a city of the blind, that at this very moment they are not conning our sails and asking themselves who we are and what we intend. But if they feel themselves secure from the north, as you suggest, cried the baron impatiently, that very security will lull them. Perhaps, but then they are secure. Any attempt to land on this side is doomed to failure at the hands of nature. Nevertheless, we make the attempt, said the obstinate baron, whose haughtiness would not allow him to yield before his officers. If you still choose to do so after what I have said, you are, of course, the person to decide, but I do not lead my men into fruitless danger. If I command you, the baron was beginning, but blood unceremoniously interrupted him. Monsieur le baron, when Monsieur de Cousset engaged us on your behalf, it was as much on account of our knowledge and experience of this class of warfare as on account of our strength. I have placed my own knowledge and experience in this particular matter at your disposal. I will add that I abandoned my own project of raiding Cartagena, not being in sufficient strength at the time to force the entrance of the harbor, which is the only way into the city. The strength which you now command is ample for that purpose. But whilst we are doing that, the Spaniards will have time to remove great parts of the wealth which this city holds. We must take them by surprise. Captain Blood shrugged. If this is a mere pirating raid, that, of course, is a prime consideration. It was with me. But if you are concerned to abate the pride of Spain and plant the lilies of France on the forts of the settlement, the loss of some treasure should not really weigh for much. Monsieur de Rivarol bit his lip in chagrin. His gloomy eyes smoldered as it considered the self-contained buccaneer. But if I command you to go to make the attempt, he asked, answer me, monsieur, let us know once for all where we stand and who commands this expedition. Positively, I find you tiresome, said Captain Blood, and he swung to Monsieur de Cousset, who sat there gnawing his lip, intensely uncomfortable. I appeal to you, monsieur, to justify me to the general. Monsieur de Cousset started out of his gloomy abstraction. He cleared his throat. He was extremely nervous. In view of what Captain Blood has submitted... Oh, to the devil with that, snapped Rivarol. It seems that I am followed by poltroons. Look you, Monsieur le Capitaine, since you are afraid to undertake this thing, I will myself undertake it. The weather is calm, and I count upon making good my landing. If I do so, I shall have proved you wrong, and I shall have a word to say to you tomorrow which you may not like. I am being very generous with you, sir. He waved his hand regally. You have leave to go. It was sheer obstinacy and empty pride that drove him, and he received the lesson he deserved. The fleet stood in during the afternoon to within a mile of the coast, and under cover of darkness, three hundred men, of whom two hundred were Negroes, the whole of the Negro contingent having been pressed into the undertaking, were pulled away from the shore in the canoes, paraguas, and ship's boats. Riverol's pride compelled him, however much he may have 